guys. I just found a big stack of old guitar magazines in a, what do you call it, like a, a drawer. <laughs> uh, now, people, these used to be just crucial. Everybody had guitar magazines. This is where you get your tab, not online. Uh, these are actual correct transcriptions. So what is this from? Uh, Guitar School, September 1993. Stone Temple Pilots, Angus Young, Rush, Kiss, Coverdale Page, Yes, Vince Neil, Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Which is what got me kind of interested in uh, getting this magazine out. So, you know, once in a while I would disagree with a transcription from an official transcription, but you kind of learn to recognize certain names as transcribers and you're like, whoa, that guy is impeccable. This is Are You Gonna Go My Way by Lenny Kravitz. Guitar transcription, Patrick Mabry. All right. So I used to cover this song with my buddy Joel in Meerkats. We'd play this. We played, you know, kind of the newest stuff. If it was cool, we'd play it. And this was, man, what a great, uh, what a great guitar part and bass part. Just sounds like old rock and roll. You know, it's like recorded on tape. Tape and tubes, you know, analog. I think Lenny Kravitz bought, like, the the mixing board from Abbey Road Studio that the Beatles used. I don't know if that's the 8-track one, but that's pretty, that's pretty important. So, uh, I thought I would uh, show you the main lick, the main figure. And, uh, you know, I could play it live, but it's been a long time. So I'm going to try to explain it. It's going to be like... So we love that because uh, we love Hendrix. We played Voodoo Child. And, uh, you know, it's obviously a Hendrix kind of a... Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, sort of deep boogie. Um, and then the guitar goes up to. Oops, just one little. It says palm mute. Okay, that's the high one. That would be guitar two coming in. But I'm not going to go super far beyond that right now. I'm just going to get you on that main lick. Anyway, I, ha I have a lot of memories of, you know, the, the students at the time would bring in like a, a tape or a CD and like, hey man, I want to learn, are you going to go my way? Okay. And I was already working on it for the band. So uh, this is pretty cool. I think anybody can do this. So don't hesitate to give this a try. You're going to go to 3rd string, 2nd fret. I recommend uh, ring finger. Ring finger with these three. You're going to have three fingers on one string, all lined up. Ring, middle, index, all on one string. And I'm going to push with all three strings up a whole step. So a whole step is two frets. Like 2nd fret to fourth fret that's a whole step a b so get your ear tuned to the b you're going to produce a b when you bend that a up or as close as you can just for fun you should be able to return it to pitch the reason i say that is, uh, I, you know, I watch my students and often they'll kind of go, and they kind of like, you know, like, well, what happened to the note? Like, I don't know. You know, it's just kind of like, felt like, well, if, you, if you're going to bend a note, you have to kind of take it home. You can't just bail on it. You got to like, 
and either silence it with your right hand or just your pick. It's like putting on the brakes. Or you can kind of get out of it with your left hand, silencing it, or bring it back down. And then silence it. Which I kind of dramatize that karate chop, but really it's just your pick. Your pick is like brake pads. Just touch the string and it's done. All right, that's important. But in this case, it does a pull off, which is like back in black, you know? So when you pull off, you kind of like blast out. I'm dra dramatizing it. It's not. And then you're gonna quickly hit this E on the fourth string, second fret. And if that's all you get out of this, that's great. This is cool. So I'm kind of overdoing that, you know, wah. <clears throat> but it does take a little bit of force. Not a lot, just enough to make that sound. And then you resolve on your E. Fourth string, second fret. So it's second fret, third string, bend up, let it down, pull off, then fourth string, second fret. That's a really important lick, so I'm taking my time explaining that, making sure. Then kind of got like three notes. That's low E, sixth string open, then fourth string open D, and then second fret, fourth string. So in a way, we've just got like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of a six note phrase. It's pretty easy. It sounds good, you know, it's neat. However, there is a low E string at the end. And on the second measure, you got that, you know, which is. So that's uh, once again from the top. And in the same measure, low E. And then we go to measure two, which is pretty similar except for this rake double threes on the first two strings. So that there's, you'll see two X's if I get the tablature to you. It's like double X's. And then you lay your pinky flat, hit the double threes. Measure four is like measure one. is like measure two. I'm gonna go down to measure five, just for fun, because I'm I'm amazed I make it that far. <laughs> like measure one. I like things that repeat, man, I really do. Measure two, or uh, what we got? Measure six is like measure two. Measure seven, looks like measure one. And measure eight is like measure two. Oh heck, let's go on to measure eight, just like measure one. Measure nine is like measure two. I'm sensing a pattern. Uh, <laughs> measure 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's 11 and measure 12. 
shapes that has a little difference. So that's why we check it out. Because measure 12 is like... Oh boy. I would have never caught, <clears throat> caught that by ear. So it's just two X, two of the X'd out. So uh, let's see if I can just play it. It says 130 beats a minute. Well, heck, let's just see if I know what I'm talking about. I'm really not sure of anything, you know. 130. That sounds pretty cool. I learned to love that metronome because it's just, oops, I bumped it. You get more sensitive to timing. One, two, three, four. So just to show you, that's kind of what it is. It's really not that hard. And it's pretty fun to play. That's what I look for. I really don't want to work super hard on any cover song. Unless I really love it. Or, you know, maybe Friday on My Mind by the Easy Beats. Or a David Bowie song. Or a Kiss song or something. I might, Or a Hendrix song. Or an Ingbe Malmsteen. Or an Eddie Angel song I'll work on. But, man, I don't want to work too hard. <laughs> Uh, lazy, lazy, and distracted, because I should be working on my solo album, finalizing the play order and some titles, and I have a dread of finishing things and filling out forms, but I'm going to try to toughen up and power through. Cool, man. All right, are you going to go my way? Pretty good song, and I, I think I'm going to try a little bit of that solo later. But now I'm going to really focus on getting this album finalized, which fills me with dread because I have to make these final decisions and it's just, I can procrastinate endlessly. So, so work on that tune a little bit and then, uh, you know, power through just a little bit of that. I think you'll have something fun to play. I'm going to try to get... A complete transcription of the song and have that available or I'll write it out with my Guitar Pro 7 software and that will be cool. I'm glad I got an SG Junior sitting here. This is nice to play. All right man, have a good day. Thanks a lot. <laughs>